Video number 16 in Project 3030 is a little different than the others. It's about my story of adventure and how I got to where I am. Most of you know about my Sea Dory 22. This is how I got there. And you know, she's living under her cover right now, but we'll see her in just a minute. You know, I went through quite a progression of different adventure crafts before I finally got to my Sea Dory. And it took me a long time to maybe learn what my direction was and how to get there. But this is the story of how I got there. Most of you probably know that I have a desire for adventure, an adventure on the water. And I dream of big adventures, grand adventures. And a lot of these things, if you guys saw video number 13, where I was going over some of the books that I have read, you know, those are the things that inspired me to start this journey. But of course, I wasn't always an adventurer. I mean, kind of, sort of. I always spent time outside, but you know, as I get through my crowded shop here, but I wasn't always an adventurer and I haven't always been adventuring on boats. Basically throughout my life, I have found adventure at the best place I could find it given my current life situation. Now some of you people in the know, my most dedicated and diehard fans, you may know my progression of watercraft throughout my life. For those of you who don't know, I basically started with a trailerable sailboat that I got off of eBay. Learned how to sail on that thing a little bit. Then I got a larger sailboat that couldn't be put on a trailer. Then I transitioned from that to a sailboat that's even smaller than the first, and then I transitioned to a sailing kayak. And then I found myself married uh, with kids and things like that, and I said, okay, this thing has to go. I have you know other things that this money needs to go to because the boat was paid for, thankfully. So I had to get rid of the boat, and I had to scale back my adventures. So I had to take a look at my current life situation and where I was at. Well, I didn't have much time, didn't have a lot of money, so I was like, well, uh, I need to get something that's cheap for sure. So I got on Craigslist. No, actually, yeah, Craigslist. And I found this here kayak. Whoop. You should have seen when I found this thing. She was in the back of someone's yard, leaning up against their privacy fence, half full of a uh, big old ant bed, growing up with weeds everywhere. All the straps and ropes and bungees were <laughs> rotten on it. It was, it was in pretty rough shape, but it had good bones. And the price was right. It fit my little meager budget. So without much experience at all and any guidance, I tossed that joker in the river, grabbed my camera, headed out down the river, and made a film. <laughs> Edited that film, tossed it on YouTube, and kept doing that. And what do you know? I started to grow an audience. And then all those hours and time spent editing and filming and adventuring started to pay off a little bit because my YouTube channel started generating a little bit of income. And I thought to myself, Hmm, this could be maybe my avenue to bigger, better adventures. I could use my side hustle to make a little money. Huh. And then put that money towards bigger and better adventures. So that's exactly what I did. I kept paddling, I kept filming, and my audience kept growing slowly. My income started to grow slowly. Then I transitioned to some inflatable paddle boards. Whoa, was that a game changer. I remember going down the river and I thought to myself, one of the first days I was on it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is like sitting on the beach, cruising down the river. I loved it, totally transformed things for me, and it let me get out and experience different adventures. So I kept paddling, kept filming, kept exploring, kept sharing, kept trying to inspire others to do the same, but, and eventually I kind of exhausted uh, the waterways and the coastal areas around my home yeah, that was you know, within reasonable reach and also within a uh, reason of me asking my family and friends to help shuttle me on my paddle. So I thought, okay, what's the next step? All the while, I'm looking around on Google Maps and Google Earth, just seeing all these cool, epic places that I'm thinking, wow, I need to be able to go there. But I'm thinking, huh, well, I can't really paddle there in a day. I can't really do all that. That's not really feasible. So I said to myself, well, it may be time to bring a motor into the equation. So I looked at my little uh, piggy bank, my little savings that I had saved for my side hustle, and I said, hmm, what can I afford? Well, I jumped on Facebook Marketplace, found a little Ginu, and I went and picked that joker up. And wow, how that Ginu opened some doors. I realized that, wow, I can explore all these places that I never could have gotten to earlier. A stretch of water that would have normally taken me a week on a paddleboard or a kayak was now taking me one day to complete. So I was able to explore different waterways and see more adventure that I would never have gotten to explore since I can't just go adventuring all day, every day. <laughs> I have to use my time wisely. Next thing you know, a year goes by and I have kind of exhausted most of the waterways and most of the feasible trips for the Ginu. And all this time I'm dreaming of bigger and better adventures. So I think, okay, uh, how much money do I have to work with? I had a little bit more. Um, so I said, okay, let's 
up the game a little bit. So I got back on Facebook Marketplace, found a little skiff. The boat itself was not in the best of shape, a little bit rough, but the motor was good and the bones were good. And it also fit my budget and I could see it taking me to those wonderful tropical places and paradises that I had dreamed about from reading those books years before. So then it was bye bye Ginu and I was working on the little boat. Man, I cleaned her up, learned a little bit about fiberglass, learned a little bit about, you know, gel coat, and making the inside nice and durable. And it turned out to be a, a decent little sharp little ride. Then I took her down to the coast, got a few hundred mile trips under my belt and started feeling like I was living on island time. And it was fantastic. Then I thought to myself, hmm, what is next? Well, I realized that that little skiff, it wasn't really the greatest at uh, going through all this chop and stuff I was putting it through. So I said, hmm, I need a little something more. And really, that was my plan in the beginning. I wanted to get something just to kind of test the waters, kind of learn a bit about things myself. Wow, that lighting is horrible. <laughs> Turns out that all worked pretty well. So then, I sold the little skiff. Luckily, I was able to make a little bit of profit on it, and then I took a little bit more money that I had saved for my side hustle, the videos and all the filming and stuff I had been doing. And I said, okay, where can I put this next? Something a little more seaworthy. That's when I found this baby here, my Kaya 173. Now she is considerably more seaworthy than my skiff and much more seaworthy than the Ginu ever was. And it moves pretty good and, you know, it's a nice ride. So then I found myself with a sweet skiff that could go a lot of places, explore a lot of things, do some fishing, just do a lot of things really well. And I kept making videos and those videos kept becoming more and more popular than my previous videos. I'm thinking, wow, people want to see these bigger and better adventures. And you know what? So do I. So you guessed it, after the little piggy bank started growing a little bit more <laughs> and my uh, craving for adventure was growing as well, I had to start thinking, okay, what is next? What is next? Because I wasn't really sure what all was out there. Now, I wish I could remember the first time that I saw a sea dory. I'm pretty sure I saw one going down the road one day, but I didn't really know what it was. But after I was doing some research on small, affordable, you know, cruising boats, I found the sea dory and I was like, oh my goodness, this has got to be it. So I kept doing research, reading forums, watching videos, and I thought to myself, okay, I think I found it. I think this is the one. So throughout this process, you know, I knew, ah, Okay, Trip, you're going to be making a little bit more of a bigger purchase. This is a big deal, so I really wanted to be sure that I got it right. So what did I do? Well, I was on some cool forums, and I found out that there is actually a gathering of Sea Dory boats, and it wasn't too far from me. So I took my skiff down, had an adventure right there in the same place where they are. When I showed up at the rendezvous, I was totally having a blast. I was like a kid in a candy store. I was walking up and down the docks, talking to various owners, boarding boats, getting tours through the different sea dories. It was totally awesome and amazing. And it didn't take me long before I knew, okay, this is the boat for me. This is definitely, obviously, the next move. I was even lucky enough to score a ride on one of the sea dory boats by one of the awesome owners, and he even let me drive it. Thank you very much for that opportunity. If you're watching this video, I do appreciate that, bud. So after that, I was sold. I was sold. So I headed home and I immediately got online and started looking. Well, a few weeks later, what do you know, I found a boat that fit within my budget and I drove 1,400 miles uh, round trip to go get her. On the way home, I was totally thrilled. I was, was so excited, even though I did have some trailer trouble, had some bearings go out. It was an adventure as always, but I got her home. As quick as I could, I got to work getting her ready for adventure and... It took about a few months, but I was able to get an outboard to repower her with. And man, after that, a few other little tweaks, she was ready to rock and roll. This Sea Dory 22 Cruiser was just such a tremendous step towards my goal. And it's still manageable within my situation. The boat is so manageable for me while I'm out there cruising. And then it's so manageable for my current situation, for my time, for my budget, everything. Now, maybe you're probably thinking, well, to goodness, trip, you sure go through boats like people go through underwear, whatever you're, whatever you're thinking over there. Well, that is true, I have. How long do I see myself keeping this sea dory? Yeah, probably a pretty good while. That's why I probably uh, spent a pretty good chunk putting a nice, new, reliable motor on there so we can go to big, uh, distant, and epic destinations. And also, she's such a practical boat, and then the next step up is such a much bigger and expensive and just bigger all-around step up that... It's going to be a while before I could afford that, but also do I need to afford that? I don't know. This boat is so capable. It is so amazing and so comfortable. Man, this thing could last me a long time and fulfill my adventure desires for quite some time. I hope my story inspires you because you can see how I went from such meager adventures and meager means and I 
worked, hustled for many years, and finally got to somewhere where, hey, I'm really checking off the boxes of some massive adventures. And you can do the same. Maybe not the exact same roadmap, maybe not be in the exact same situation I am, but there is a way. I didn't know of a way, but I just came up with this way. Here it is. It kind of just fell at my feet. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take the reins. I'm going to go make it happen. That's what I did. So you can do the same, folks. That goes for anything in life. All right. Hope you enjoy the video. Take care of yourselves. Get out there. God bless. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> this 3030 thing's killing me.